Hi, my name is James Shepard, and I'm enjoying this mini series on selling specific business types. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to sell merchant services to auto repair shops. How to sell merchant services to auto repair. So this includes your you know, auto repair, tire and lube, uh, auto body shops, transmission, you know, whatever, all that stuff. So we're gonna talk about kind of this auto industry uh, of repair and how to sell merchant services to them. So let me say a couple things about this. Number one, this is actually one of my favorite verticals, probably right behind um, the pizza shops. The hair salons, as I mentioned earlier, they were always a little tough for me just because people are so busy. It, it is a little bit difficult to get contacts there. Um, and so really the auto repair and the pizza shops, for whatever reason, I have like more of those clients than anybody else. Um, and so the auto repair is really cool. So I'm gonna talk to you about a couple things you need to understand about the auto shops. Um, so let's start as we've been doing with the payment processing first. What are some things you need to understand about their challenges in accepting electronic forms of payment? The number one challenge for auto repair uh, shops is the types of electronic forms of payment that they accept, okay? Let me explain what I mean by this. So most auto repair places, they're doing transactions that range anywhere from maybe a couple hundred dollars. Now, of course, Tire and Lube, you know, they may do $50, $60 transactions, but normally it's $200 to $700, depending on what they're doing, if they allow payments or whatever. So they're like larger transactions. And the problem is they have people that wanna pay all kinds of different ways. And there are several really unique challenges that come from that. The first thing is the percentage fee is the only thing that matters. I mean, you could literally charge a uh, you know auto repair place a 30 cent per item fee, and that's really not gonna affect their, their fees very much as a percentage of their overall you know processing cost, and it's not gonna affect your profits. The thing that matters is the percentage that you give them. So, Here's the thing about auto repair. There's a lot of variation and it's really crazy. Like you'll see an auto repair shop where it's like, you know, they did 10,000 this month, 10,000 this month. This month they paid $200 and this month they paid 430 with the same company with the same pricing. Why is that? Well, the reason is because of interchange cost, okay? When I come in and I'm paying with my corporate rewards card or whatever, that's a really, really big problem for them because if that corporate card has a 2.5% you know, uh, fee on interchange, well, 2.5% of, you know, $1,000, that's 25 bucks. That's a lot to pay for that $1,000 in processing. So the, the percentage really, really matters. Um, and so you have to look at a couple of things. Number one, if you want them to save tons of money, if they think they can pull it off, you can say, look, when people come in, you need to let them know that you prefer check and debit cards. That's all you do is say, we prefer check and debit cards. Now, you can't even go really far to the extreme and only allow them to use their debit card with a PIN number. Now, why would you say only use a debit card with a PIN number? Because of the next challenge that auto repair places face with payment stuff is chargebacks, okay? People will, you know, wait six months and then their transmission goes out again because they're driving an old piece of crap. And what do they do? They say, oh, this transmission, they didn't fix it right at the auto repair place eight months ago. Yeah, they did. Your car is terrible. It's old. It's junky, you know. But, you know, the consumer says, I'm going to call up my bank. And they, you know, they're going to call it. Maybe they call the auto repair place first. Hey, you got to fix it for free this time because last time I paid you $700 and it broke again. It's like, no, we're not going to do it for free. So what do they do? They call their bank. Hey, there was this fraudulent charge on my card, you know. So they get a lot of that. Now, here's the cool thing. I don't know if you realize this or not, but when you take a PIN number, like a debit PIN number, there is no such thing as a fraudulent PIN debit transaction because if you called your bank and said, hey, there was a fraudulent transaction, and, you know, and the bank's gonna be like, well, you used your PIN number. Well, that wasn't me. Well, then you shouldn't have given your PIN number to somebody else. Like, it's your fault. So there's no such thing as a fraudulent PIN debit transaction. So as a result of that, if they accept PIN number, that's great. And again, even if they can move the needle just a little bit, you gotta understand the difference here. Let's say that they're doing like, I don't know, 50 transactions a month on average. And if they can get right now, maybe three of them are with check or debit card because everybody wants to get the reward points. But if they can get that three up to 15, that's going to probably save them a hundred bucks a month because every time they take a check card, it has a 22 cent per item fee, which is high, but we don't care because it's an auto shop and their average ticket is really high. And it's a 0.05% cost. Well, that's really, really low. That's what we want is a low percentage. Then you put your 50, 60 basis points on top of that of markup. You're making a healthy profit. Their costs are coming way down. Everybody's happy. Everybody wins. So the idea is you want to get them more towards the, the check card stuff. Um, one, a couple of things, there's so many things I could tell you about auto shop uh, selling them, but another thing I would tell you that's super important with them is the electronic check processing. You need to ask them, do you accept checks? Okay. Now, to be totally honest with you, most people right now, and they're like, yes, I'm like, stop doing that. <laughs> but um, sometimes they have to accept checks, especially if it's like a business check or something like that. Well, what I tell them is, 
use electronic check processing for a couple of reasons. Number one, they need to get something called check conversion plus guarantee. Okay, it's called check conversion plus guarantee. So if you've never sold electronic check processing, there's two reasons people do electronic checks. One is convenience. Just the, the fact of running a check through the, tr through the machine, the little scanner thing, and then it just goes to their bank account. It's really nice, they don't have to go to the bank. It's literally saving them a trip to the bank, okay? Now, that really matters when you have a lot of checks. For an auto repair shop, not so much because they're getting like three checks a month, so that's not a big deal to them. What they care about is the guarantee part. The guarantee part says, if the, if the uh, check processor accepts this check, they also accept the risk that it's a bad check. And if it is a bad check, it doesn't go back to the auto repair shop, it goes back to the check processing company. They then have to come after the person and try to collect the money. Now this is good on several levels. Obviously, number one, they don't ever lose the money because once they get that check, they have that check. The other thing that's really good about electronic check processing conversion plus guarantee um, is that they don't have to deal with the bad check, which is guaranteed to lose them at least one client, probably many, many, many more. As a business owner, you do not want to be the one that calls your client and says, hey, your check bounced. That's a really bad conversation. So if it's just the check company that's like, hey, we you know accepted a check, we, we deal with all this on behalf of so-and-so, it's kind of like impersonalizes it a little bit and makes it a lot easier for them. So ask them that question. Again, maybe they have no problem with bad checks. They've never had a bad check in the entire time they've been doing it or whatever, and that's fine. Then it's, is it worth the convenience of having the electronic check processing done? Or do they just not want to accept checks? You know, maybe they don't want to accept them at all. But either way, you got to push them towards the check card transaction. So. How do we actually go about selling these places? Well, the good news, the good thing about this is auto repair, they're like the easiest people ever to make contact with, which I really love. They hate it because like people are walking in all the time. So a couple things I would do about that. Um, you know, one thing when you go into an auto repair shop, I don't know how to give you this tip exactly. It's kind of hard to verbalize this, but you've got to be really, really relaxed and really casual. If you're out selling auto repair shops, you should be wearing jeans and a collared shirt at the most <laughs> um, and, you know, tennis shoes and you should just be relaxed and just walk in. Hey, how y'all doing today? I'm, I say y'all. I'm in central Pennsylvania. If you're in Manhattan, don't say y'all. They'll kick you out. But, you know, you walk in. Hey, you know, how's it going? How y'all doing today? And just kind of like, you know, you're just relaxed. That's a, I don't know how else to tell you. It really matters when you go to an auto repair shop. They're all like kind of like doing their thing and they're just like moving along. So you got to be relaxed. You walk in. Start talking to them about payment processing challenges that they face, you know, and say, hey, I'm doing a little research. I've got some uh, auto repair shop clients of mine, and we're just trying to like brainstorm ideas. That's what I always say. Like, we're just trying to brainstorm ideas. Um, do you guys get like a lot of chargebacks on like the credit card transactions where people later claim it was fraudulent? And they're like, no, no, we don't get that. Oh, okay, well, that's cool. What about electronic checks? Do you guys take that? No, do you think you should? Like, would that be, but you know, start talking to them. They will talk to you, but you've got to come to them on the premise of, I've got some, I already have some auto repair clients on the payment processing side. And so we're just like brainstorming some programs. So to even example here, like I actually don't customize the marketing materials. I don't walk in with like the shiny auto repair program for payment processing. I don't do that with them because they don't like that. What they like is casual, relaxed. I'm in the local market. I wanted to brainstorm some ideas with you for my other clients because payment processing costs are like ridiculous for auto repair. How do we get them down? You know, and start talking to them about now. What about like check card? Because I don't know if you realize like the check card transactions are like a fraction of the cost of taking these reward cards. Are you guys doing anything to like promote that or any, you know? So you get the idea. You could do different things like that. Last tip I'll give you on this: um, cash discounting. I talked about it a little bit with hair salons. They're like, yeah, okay. Auto repair, cash discounting. If you're doing cash discounting, which again, I'm actually not like a huge fan of cash discounting. I think everybody thinks I am because two years ago I said it was going to be a huge thing and it is. Just because you predict something doesn't mean that you wanted it to come true. <laughs> okay. I actually don't love cash discounting. You'll learn a lot more about that in January with my big live event. I'm going to launch next year about some things I want to do to surcharge correctly, but that's a whole nother story. But the point is the cash discounting right now, that's the best we can do to pass cost on to the consumer. Um, cash discounting and auto repair, they love that a lot of times. Maybe six out of 10 times they're going to be like, Ooh, that's really cool. Tell me more. So you can talk to them about that. Yeah. I have another client that's passing their cost through to the consumer with the, it's like a surcharge. If you see anything about that, have a conversation with them. Okay. Then at the end of it, what you do is this, you do this really casual thing. What you do is you just say, you're done. You talk to them for, for two or three minutes. You're casual, you're relaxed. And then you're like, you know, let me, let me ask you, um, I'm trying to help my other clients out. Do you have a statement I can take a look at? I'd like to kind of see, you know, what are your fees? Like, what are you guys paying? I might be able to give you some tips for free actually that might help you lower your costs because I've been working with my other clients and maybe I can help you guys out too. Do you have a statement I can take a quick look at? That's how you sell the auto repair. Are you really casual and they're asking for that? They're going to give it to you. Then you move forward with it. So 
Um, that was some real advice. Okay, I've sold tons of these auto repair places and it really does work. So hopefully that was helpful to you today. Again, my name is James Shepard. Thanks so much for taking time to watch or listen to this episode. Talk to you soon.